Welcome back. We are now going to look at our third Bach minuet in G major. We've learned three fantastic minuets in G major by Jas Bach in this book. All different pieces, uh, different musical ideas, expression, um, just absolutely terrific pieces. Uh, each one. So in this one, what I'd like to talk about are the arpeggio figures in the first few measures and how to approach those from a technical standpoint to make them easier for you to play and also for, for them to sound better. And, and one thing I'll throw in and to keep them in a better rhythm. So what we're going to do is we're going to engage the wrist for a, a lot of these arpeggios or actually for all of these arpeggios. And uh, this way we're, in, we're instead of just pressing down on the keys like this, we're going to kind of roll through the, the musical phrase. And this does several things, this technique of using the wrist. First of all, in piano, when we use our wrist for a phrase like this, we are going to follow the musical phrase and translate what's on the page into the physicality of the playing and, and really capture the spirit of the musical idea. So uh, that's a very important uh, concept right there. The other thing is it is a very natural and relaxing motion to use the wrist in the p with the piano. It gives us a, a great tone and an even sound as well as being very smooth to play. And we're involving larger muscle groups the, the shoulder muscle, the, el uh, the muscles around the shoulder, around the elbow, the, um, the, the forearm, around the wrist, and in the hands. So, so it's a complex of motions. And this is, as a general principle, is very important with piano. Uh, most of the time, even if it's a very, very small motion, it's good to involve different muscle groups. It's very rare that we just use one isolated muscle group in our piano playing. That's not, uh, that's something that is quite rare and it's done for effect and it's also, uh, if it's done too frequently, if your piano technique is just based on small muscle groups like just the, the digits, the muscles around the digits, then you're going to get tired very, quite quickly. You're going, you won't have the endurance to play longer pieces of music. So we want to inv involve the larger muscle groups for the, for the ease of playing but also for the sound and the third point for the rhythm. When we involve these larger muscle groups we're also so often integrating our breathing and uh, getting a better overall rhythm. A lot of times pianists, including myself, will involve a musical gesture with breath, a long breath to uh, have a consistent rhythm rather than short <laughs> kind of panting breaths that sometimes happen when we're nervous and we're playing, <laughs> and those can definitely throw off our rhythm. So here we go. Without further ado, let's look at measure one and two of our third minuet in G major by Bach. And what we're going to do is outline a G major arpeggio. Bach, right at the start of this piece, states the key. We're in G major. And he has a, this wonderful little curly cue that he does to to create a musical theme and it's a so what we're going to do is walk up a G major arpeggio and we're going to drop our wrist kind of like making a smiley face or half moon shape as we go up to the G the high G and then we'll kind of turn around the wrist um, as we hit the A with our thumb and it's going to look like this That's a bit exaggerated, so you could see it on the video. Here's one once again. And then we'll, we raise the wrist on that high G, the second high G, and then drop it down for a kind of staccato bounce on the two lower Gs. So the whole figure. Okay, now let's look at the left hand. It does something similar. We're going to start on the G, which is two Gs below middle C. And 
with this G, we're going to have a, another circular gesture that will go down like a half moon shape and then a half moon semicircular shape up as we get to the high G. So it's very similar, just down like that. And uh, again, I'm exaggerating the motion for effect on the video so that you can see it. But um, in your own playing, it won't be such a large gesture. Something like that. You can see what happens here is you get some momentum from the wrist and also a very good round tone that's even. If you just play that with the fingers, it's just kind of a a bland uh, tone and the, it doesn't have a sweep of a gesture. That's with the wrist. That's without the wrist. It's a subtle difference in a lot of cases, but over time and um, in your own piano room, you'll hear a very marked difference between those two. And I would recommend to explore using these kind of wrist motions when you have arpeggiated figures like this. The, the Bach C major. You can use some of the wrist motion there. Okay, that's another good example. Okay, well, thank you very much. I will see you on the next video.